Dear Medicos, Welcome to Indian Anatomist. People who want to become doctors, are free to check out the YouTube channel, Indian Anatomist. Today's session is a component of an ongoing lecture series, focusing on general anatomy, 5.2. The subtopic under discussion is the comparison between, shunt and spurt muscles, which falls within the, broader context of the muscular system. Although the terms spurt, and shunt muscles are rarely used in conventional anatomical discussion, they may refer to different types, or functions of muscles depending on the context, in which they are used. Now, how these muscles are identified in, human body. Simple. According to the long axis of acting bone. Spurt muscles are also called as, transaxial muscles. The spurt muscle, whose proximal attachment is distant from the acting joint it operates on, and the distal attachment is, close to the same joint at which, an action is performed. Typically, the spurt muscles are, prime movers. This arrangement, directs most of its force across the bone, rather than along it, and provides the force that works parallel to the, bone's movement path. For example, at elbow joint, the brachialis muscle is a chief flexor orospurt muscle, because its proximal attachment is away from the elbow joint and distally attached to coronoid process and ulnar tuberosity of ulna bone. In human body, the spurt muscle fibers are designed for speed. These fibers are rich in, fast twitch muscle fibers, that contract quickly and generate force. Sprinters, and jumpers, employ these spurt muscles. Now, the next variety of muscle is, shunt muscles, also called as, paraxial muscles. A shunt muscle is one, whose proximal attachment is close to the acting joint. And the distal attachment is, further away from that joint. The shunt muscles may be, synergists, or fixators. Once again, I will take the elbow joint as example for shunt muscle. Dear students, please remember, the same elbow joint has been discussed for the, spurt muscle too. At elbow joint, apart from the brachialis, the brachioradialis also brings the flexion. But the brachioradialis muscle is synergist and fixator to the brachialis muscle, which is a prime mover. Here, the brachioradialis muscle is considered as shunt muscle, because, its proximal attachment arises from lateral supracondylar ridge of the humerus, and distally, it is attached to styloid process of radius bone, which is far away from the elbow joint. The shunt muscle fibers are, developed for, stamina. These fibers have, many slow twitch muscle fibers, that can contract repeatedly without, fatigue. Running marathons requires strength or stamina, which shunt muscles provide. Dear students, hope you all understood about the spurt, and shunt muscles. In our body, these muscles are present in all the areas. Both these muscles are very essential for fast acting and at the same time to withstand for longer period to overcome the fatigue. Dear Medicos, I hope you enjoyed today's discussion. In the next video, I'll be covering yet another interesting topic from, gross anatomy, that also has clinical implications. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Good day all.